This is Digivision Network. This is Digivision Network with Byra Gabi. My name is Gideon Tupilaba. Today we are talking economics, purely economics. And we are doing that with the Honorable Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budgets of Lagos State, talking about Honorable Commissioner Sam Ikubi. You are welcome to the show, Honorable Commissioner. Thank you very much, Gideon. Nice to have me. Okay, so before we start, uh, we need you to let us know who Mr. Sam Egube is. Okay, my name is Samuel Egube, and I'm, like you said, the Honorable Commissioner for Economic Planning and, and Budget. Uh, that's what I, I am. As Commissioner for Economic and Budget, we are primarily responsible for strategy, statewide strategy, statewide resource allocation. Right, it's what we do, and then statewide performance management. So, the job is a very extensive job. Uh, therefore, if Lagos fails, Sami Gube will not be innocent in any way. Okay. If Lagos succeeds, and then Sami Gube will be part of that success. Okay, you are leading with lots of responsibility as um, the Honorable Commissioner for Economic Planning, which borders around monitoring and a lot of economic activities. How easy would you describe your job? So the first way to understand the job and whether it is challenging or easy is to understand what Lagos really is. Hmm. Um, Lagos is one of the, is the leading economy in Nigeria, is the gateway of Nigeria to the world, and is the world's gateway into Nigeria. In this space, you have most, almost 90, something 98% of all the bank headquarters located. The oil companies are also here. Um, you have one of the most enlightened um, set of people in one place in this country, in Lagos. Uh, almost anybody that is somebody in Nigeria has some footprint in Lagos. You have some of the bright, best and brightest people and institutions in Lagos. Therefore, if you are saddled with the responsibility for planning, right, and for um, resource allocation and performance management, uh, in the midst of this very enlightened, demanding, analytical mindset, then certainly it's a very challenging assignment. Um, the difference, though, is that um, we have Lagosians behind us, and so Lagosians actually participate in crafting the strategy, in managing performance, and so that capacity which you see in Lagos is extremely supportive of the Lagos State Government and therefore supportive of my work in delivering outcomes that make um, Lagosians happy. Now, thank you very much for that response. For the sake of students and researchers, economic researchers, we would like to know, we've always heard that Lagos, if it were to be a country, would be the sixth largest economy in Africa. So how would you explain this, especially statistically? Well, um, it's basically driven from the GDP, right? And um, Lagos, from a gross domestic product standpoint, um, creates economic activities, right, that are larger than most countries in Africa. And uh, so when you try to evaluate the size of Lagos, it is, um, it's a large market. Um, it controls 70% of the air travels and the maritime business um, in Nigeria. First of all, understand that Nigeria is number one, right? And if Lagos is that space, where a huge percentage of these economic activities is derived from or facilitated through, then it then begins to tell you why Lagos, in terms of ranking, if it were a nation, um, looking at Africa, uh, will rank that high. Um, Lagos is that economic hub, and as we go into the African continental free trade zone, you begin to see the important role that Lagos will play in taking Nigeria um, into um, that economic zone and making sure that Nigeria, Lagos itself, becomes a hub. We are currently the leading 
supporter of as, as a city of startups, right, in Africa, ahead of other known cities uh, like Nairobi, um, like Cape Town, um, in, the, in, in Africa. Uh, today, uh, we are one of the largest markets, right, in the West African region. Uh, when you look at the amount of businesses we, we control that have to pass through Lagos, um, you then begin to see that Lagos uh, plays a very significant role in the way Africa will will evolve. Um, so Africa cannot, uh, just like when you talk about the black race, you can't talk about the evolution of the black race without talking about Africa. But Nigeria controls that population. And Lagos, uh, with a population of about 27 million people, is actually the epicenter. And, and because of that, when you also see the challenges that come with it, um, when, when, when COVID was coming, um, Lagos was also the epicenter for it because of the air traffic control. Therefore, the kind of solution and the kind of thinking that com comes out of Lagos is the kind that must be a symbol and a benchmark for Nigerian cities and African cities and global cities to try to, to, to work with. So we're not surprised when uh, Fitch rating came upgrading Lagos from a double A to a triple A rating on account of the resilience of our operating environment and our sustainability, right? It's not surprising because of the kind of capacity that Lagos has, the kind of leadership led by Mr. Governor Babaji de Ushula Solu, the strength of the cabinet that he has put together, and actually the overall support of Lagosians, right? Because the strength of every class is the strength of the minds and the people in that class. And I must say that is an exciting experience interacting with the cerebral capacity of the people of Lagos and the openness and, and leadership style of Mr. Governor in encouraging full expression of the capacities of the cabinet. And that is what we see um, when you see the translation of Lagos um, in, uh, uh, in Africa as a whole, as a high-ranking uh, city center, a right high-ranking city. All right, thank you. Um, Lagos, no doubt, is uh, is the commercial center for West Africa, no doubt. Um, this means that they've been championing a lot of developmental courses. What are these specifically that you think other states in the federation can learn from? So development sometimes might you might want to look at it only from um, infrastructure, uh, but. Infrastructure alone is not what brings development. Sometimes it's the thinking. Mm -hmm. So you will see right from the time of um, Ashiwa Jubala Metinugu, we, we started out championing the energy systems to say, look, we need to be able to provide power for our people. So you remember all the, um, the, the power systems that were generated at that time. You see us championing courses that speak to our federalism, right? Um, we find us pushing ideas, right, that champion um, issues around our development, the development of our curricula, the development of our systems. All right, thank you. Now, let's talk about the pandemic. Is true and anybody was uh, caught on unawares? How did Lagos, Lagos respond to this economically? Okay, uh, so uh, the... The response economically cannot be devoid, cannot be separated from um, the leadership, right, um, on all fronts. And, and what, what I would say is that um, um, we immediately set up what we call um, a command structure because we knew a lot of things would be disrupted. Um, a business continuity plan we implemented. So it's about preparing for emergencies and Lagos. Um, have prepared for, have gone through emergencies before. So when emergencies come, uh, it's important that you learn from those emergencies and come out stronger. And, and therefore, you, you recall that at one point, Lagos went through an Ebola system and therefore had built certain forms of capacity. But the leadership of Mr. Babaji Olusola Shalom, as we knew that this was coming, um, it was not clear the level of disruption that will happen we immediately had an emergency system, even in the leadership, right? We had powers given to what we call like a war cabinet, 
right, with the backing of full cabinet to say, listen, once you guys take a decision, right, around this thing, you can run with it, right? We have a structure which Mr. Governor became the incident commander and the commissioner of um, health became the deputy incident commander to basically drive policies and actions, right, that will help us get through the pandemic. So you will see the communication systems of Mr. Governor um, almost sometimes every day or every week and, and the commissioner always giving the people information. It is born out of a system that once you carry the people along, right, you have a more robust system because you need that followership and that faith and trust. And Lagos uh, demonstrated that trust in following uh, Mr. Governor's leadership, right, through the entire uh, COVID situation. The second thing that happened was very strong coordination, hmm. right? Um, Lagos is not just about the Lagos state government, it's about the people of Lagos. So in the pandemic, we were able to open channels of communication with the private sector, channels of communication with the citizens at large. So you will see that the government, as a government, intervened very strongly, right? But also the people of Lagos, because they believed in the government, intervened also directly, right? And then you saw also spaces where the people of Lagos um, combining with the government, intervened um, together. So it is that spirit of oneness, togetherness, um, led by Mr. Babajide Olushola Solu, um, that actually galvanized that level of coordination. Listen, come to think about it, the, the resource that is available to the Lagos state government is probably less than 3% of what is available to the state in terms of the economic activity of the state. And therefore, Except you are able to galvanize that cooperation with the private sector, you will not see incremental resources flowing into the state beyond the taxes that, that people pay. But to fight COVID, you needed much more than the resources of the state government. And we saw it coming uh, from the people of Lagos. We saw it coming from the businesses in Lagos. We also saw it coming from the federal government, right? I mean, the federal government will not move for Lagos if they thought Lagos was not organized um, Lagos was not forward-looking and was not capable of doing this. So all of this cooperation, coordination, and communication was what Mr. Governor calls the 3C, which he deployed and everybody followed and is the reason why we, we have some of these great outcomes, which the World Health Organization does acknowledge and the international community also acknowledges. In fact, when Fitch, the International Rating Agency, rated Lagos, right, um, it, it upgraded Lagos to triple A, right, on account of the resilience of its operating environment. So all of these things I'm talking about actually speaks to resilience. We immediately also were able to have ESCO because we had the technology to be able to have ESCO remotely, while other countries, even in the West, were unable to do that, right? Lagos was able to switch on cabinets very easily. The second thing also was that we created safe corridors. So in interacting with, with, the, with the private sector and interacting with the people of the we knew that there were certain sectors that were crucial and we needed to ensure that their supply chain was less interrupted as much as possible. So we were able to design and create safe corridors for them to be able to move in and move out. We created specialized markets controlled market so that people can at least buy food, right? Uh, we, we did several many creative things to just make it work so that the economy of Lagos does not drop um, to a, or grind to, to a halt so that governance and decision making does not get into a dark alley, right? Was what um, we were able to do under the leadership of Mr. Governor. And it showed out in every parameter. So. I mean, it's easy now when you look at the landscape and you see Mr. Governor getting a lot of awards. Um, that is what leadership um, said. And we, we knew that as Lagos, we're going to be carrying a national body, right? Uh, whatever we do not manage well in Lagos can become a disaster okay. if we allow it go nationally. So that responsibility is the same reason why we keep saying that Nigerians should see Lagos as a national asset. Right, and should accord Lagos that positioning, right? Because if Lagos thrives, we will be able to pull the nation, 
right, into a position of prosperity, right? Which is why it's important that all of this conversation about giving Lagos State a special status, um, allowing Lagos State um, have full expression in terms of state police, in terms of the security architecture, to just contribute and layer under the federal structure, right, would be extremely helpful. But this is exactly what happened uh, during COVID. It's not, it's not like over yet, but we have gone through the first, the second, the third, and the fourth wave. And we have learned significantly in that process. But not only in the learning, we've also built capacity, right? We've built capacity in the, in the health sector to be able to improve the services, right? And if you go to um, a lot of our public hospitals, uh, general, you see that generally there's a significant improvement in the service, right, that are rendered out of that, right, in terms of the kind of welfare systems we give our doctors, uh, uh, our health professionals, um, the the rehabilitation and renovation going on within those health sectors as uh, health institutions, the equipping and the targeted training which we are giving to our health professional is yielding outcomes that ensures the service level moves off a, a lot of notion and also the deployment of technology. Um, soon we would be launching a technology system that ensures that if you go to one hospital, right, we'll be able to assess your health um, data and health information. Uh, you don't have to go back to only one hospital. You never know where emergency meets you. Uh, and the push of the button, we should be able to, and that is also writing on the technology mm -hmm. infrastructure that we are that building. This is a new year, 2022. What should Lagosians be expecting? I think Lagosians are already beginning to see the snippets. Um, just recently, last week, the last two weeks, um, we bought the trains from Milwaukee in, in the US. Uh, that was not an easy thing. We're snatching an asset from, from the US economy, uh, an asset that will have been of value to them. Uh, we're bringing to Lagos, right? So we expect that we begin to see, uh, we begin to continue um, in terms of our infrastructure development. Everything we are doing is beginning to come together, right? We're beginning to see everything. When you go to the Koyi environment, you see all the network of roads we're doing there. Uh, I was passing in the night uh, in the VI, in the Utilo area, and I could see the roads, right? A, a large road, um, lighting systems going on. You see the junction improvement in the Lekki area. You see us continuing. You see us continue very diligently on the Badagri Expressway. We want to be able to take at least a, a bring a portion of it uh, to conclusion. Maybe take it up to Okuko, right, and then continue the the, the other portions of it. Um, you will see um, the health sector. Uh, we we are about to um, just launch. Uh, what I would call um, is, is a health hall, really, in the Awolowo area or Nikon area, right, um, which is a PPP arrangement with the Lagos State uh, government. It's basically a medical hall that we shall be doing there. Uh, we are going to uh, continue on the Massey Children's Hospital, which, when completed, will be one of the most equipped, sophisticated uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, in the Adeni Yadeli axis there. Uh, we are uh, continuing to rehabilitate a lot of our healthcare positions. Our technology infrastructure would have advanced very significantly this year because they are ahead of target. Uh, they are probably about 2,100 or 2,300 kilometers of fiber duct lane right now. Um, so they are close to 3,000. And all the technology that will ride on that already is, is working. You will see an improvement in the educational performance. Um, I have talked with the Commissioner for Education, and even though she's 80, is a very strong, uh, it will be called the Distinguished the Distinction Rating. She wants to push it a little bit beyond 18 in terms of achieving a pass rate. So you see, as you improve things um, generally, um, you, you, you will see all of that. In the tertiary education, you will see us launch the, um, uh, the technology uh, university, right? Uh, basically, to then focus a lot on building the technical capability of our people. If the economy must increase, then our ability to respond cerebrally and to be forward-looking uh, will continue to be stronger. 
um, last week we'll continue to get significant amounts of um, um, grants to support innovation, to support research, and it is driven also by uh, private sector uh, 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 people driving that. Uh, we basically, uh, we called it the budget of consolidation. You saw the increase, the 1.75 trillion budget, right? And uh, that is up from about 1.2. So it's a lot, 66% of that would be um, investment in capital expenditure. Right? So you see all of that in the road. We're going to be very heavy on internal roads. So you see PwC do quite a bit. So when we say we're moving from 333 budgetary allocation for infrastructure to 619, 86% is because we want to do all of that. But it's also a humanitarian environment, right? Um, we have to also support uh, our human capital development. We had said from the beginning that we would, we would also take on the vulnerable amongst us. So there are developments in the old people's homes. We are looking at our youth. We are building stadia, about eight stadia, right, which we, we have started to just ensure our youths are engaged together with what we are doing in technology. In technology, we'll be doing about 30 billion in investment, which is up by about 27 billion. Um, in the environment, when it comes to our drains, we'll also be doing quite a bit. And on our, on, on our environment, we are moving it up to about 92 billion in investment in this budget, which is an increase of about 36 billion. You know, last time, um, last year, when you saw the floods coming globally, and you saw cities in, in, in the Netherlands, cities in Germany go down in flood, and Lagos, which normally goes down, did not go down. It was not because we were lucky. It was because we made investments in our drains. Uh, we ensured that we kept them flowing. We built and expanded new, new drains, and that was why Lagos was saying we continue to push um, that agenda. I'm sure you see the improvement in the vehicular traffic in the Apapa area, uh, which used to be a nightmare. Mr. Governor gave his commitment, and now trips that would normally take hours on, on end now take um, about 20, 26 uh, minutes. And we're getting good feedback from the companies in those areas that we're almost giving up uh, to say a new lease of life have moved there. That's not the end of it. Um, we, we need to the capacity of the of the of the of the free zone and the deep sea port will also enable a more lasting solution to all of those apapa challenge. Uh, we'll continue to push those agendas to just ensure um, that the, the Greater Lagos, which Lagosians have always looked up to, um, they will see, they will embrace. It's not something for their children and their grandchildren. They too will see a taste of it. Um, they too will ride on those rails when the rails are, are finally commissioned. They will see the Fort Milan um, come through. They will see um, all. They will see the, the, the power systems which we are working on. By the way, we are trying to create an alternative market, right, for power in Lagos. Lagos is big enough, and we are then saying let's challenge the system to see what we can do working with the discos and working with other uh, power. Um, contributors in terms of ideas around what to do around the power uh, to just get things going. We will also um, heighten what we'll be doing in agriculture. One of the things that COVID taught us was that the high level of consumption of food in Lagos meant that if we do not protect the supply chain and we do not strengthen our storage capabilities, right, Lagos can easily run out of food. And that's why we are conceptualizing a major market system Right. In addition to the the, the which we write on the on the on the uh, uh, agri master plan, the five year plan, which was launched uh, uh, recently. But above that, Lagos is not a, a short term uh, undertaking. So, from economic planning, where the state is beginning to work on a thirty year um, Lagos State Economic uh, Development Plan, right. Um, the first one, which was 2012 to 2022, right, we are about, we'll be replacing it this year with a 30-year long range. We must plan long. We must look at the sectors that will deliver the kind of growth that is required to make Lagos that economic and financial hub that will not be uh, overlooked globally, right? We must have those long-range plans. Um, 
develop those sectors, expand the physical planning area so we are not dealing with just one central Lagos. Ekpe will have um, a significant development. The Badagri Axis will have significant development. The population of Lagos will be redistributed uh, from a centralized operating uh, market space. We intend also to work on the revenue base because at the end of the day, really, all of these things are driven by revenue. When they say Lagos is resilient, it's because of our ability also to improve um, our revenue streams. And we'll continue to work on that to look for pockets of revenue source uh, minutes. And we're getting good feedback from the companies in those areas that we're almost giving up uh, to say a new lease of life have moved there. That's not the end of it. Um, we, we need to, the capacity of the, of the, of the, of the free zone and the deep sea port will also enable a more lasting solution to all of those APAPA challenge. Uh, we'll continue to push those agendas to just ensure um, that the, the greater Lagos, which Lagosians have always looked up to, um, they will see, they will embrace. It's not something for their children and their grandchildren. They too will see a taste of it. Um, they too will ride on those rails when the rails are, are finally commissioned. They will see the Fort Milan um, come through. They will see um, all, they will see the, the, the power systems which we are working on. By the way, we are trying to create an alternative market, right, for power in Lagos. Lagos is big enough, and we are then saying, let's challenge the system to see what we can do working with the discos and working with other uh, power um, contributors in terms of ideas around what to do around the power uh, to just get things going. We will also um, heighten what we'll be doing in agriculture. One of the things that COVID taught us was that the high level of consumption of food in Lagos meant that if we do not protect the supply chain and we do not strengthen our storage capabilities, right, Lagos can easily run out of food. And that's why we are conceptualizing a major market system, right, in addition to the, the, the which we ride on the, on the, on the uh, uh, agri master plan, the five-year plan, which was launched uh, uh, recently. But above that, Lagos is not a, a short-term uh, undertaking. So from economic planning where the state is beginning to work on a 30-year um, Lagos State economic uh, development plan, right? Um, the first one, which was 2012 to 2022, right? We are about, we'll be replacing it this year with a 30-year long range. We must plan long. We must look at the sectors that will deliver the kind of growth that is required to make Lagos that economic and financial hub that will not be uh, overlooked globally, right? We must have those long-range plans, um, develop those sectors, expand the physical planning area so we are not dealing with just one central Lagos. Ekpe will have um, a significant development. The Badagri Axis will have significant development. The population of Lagos will be redistributed uh, from a centralized operating uh, market space. We intend also to work on the revenue base because at the end of the day, really, all of these things are driven by revenue. When they say Lagos is resilient, it's because of our ability also to improve um, our revenue streams. And we'll continue to work on that to look for pockets of revenue sources that will increase our ability to respond. Uh, we're also working on what we call a sovereign wealth, it's not a sovereign, a state wealth fund. Right, right. So we are working on it very aggressively. We believe that this year we should be able to pass the law. Um, that way we are able to respond um, very strongly when emergencies come from a funding perspective because we will be able to have improved our savings and be able to strengthen also our ability to, to um, leverage our determination to build infrastructure in the state. Um, those are things we should look forward to. Uh, we are improving the performance management mechanisms also of Lagos so that when we say we will do things, we have the systems internally to ensure that we monitor for performance and for value. Wow, <laughs> that is very enlightening. Thank you very much for your time, Honorable Commissioner Sam Egubi. Thank, Thank, Thank you very you. much. That was Mr. Sam Egube, the Honorable Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget in Lagos State, talking to us about a lot of issues. If you have missed it, just go to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Network.
to catch up with what you have missed. Until I come your way again next week, my name is Gideon Tobinaba. Bye for now. Thank you.